The year is 2099. The Earth is ravaged by irreversible climate change, mega corporations, and of course, genetically engineered killer pandas. On the eve of humankind's last stand, we gather in the one piece of common ground that still survived, huddled round a stage in Tomato Town for a rousing speech from the resistance leader appropriately garbed in the traditional Agent Peely skin. A depressing picture, and an inevitable one, if Fortnite ends up consuming all other forms of video game, and indeed, any other wider form of entertainment. Beware the devil dressed in fish's clothing. Okay, we'll admit this is all quite dramatic. Despite our aggressively Puritan fears, we're not suggesting Fortnite will cause the end of the world, even if it will likely be the only thing left standing after the end times along with cockroaches and EA's legal department. Is there a difference? But Fortnite's phenomenal success has rarely been seen in gaming before. While we've seen plenty of immensely popular games in the past eventually die down as new fads and gimmicks crop up, considering the current trend of live service style gameplay demanding constant, never-ending attention from players, could it not be the craziest idea to think this might start the slow death of video game innovation? You know, eventually, hopefully after Beyond Good and Evil 2 and The Elder Scrolls 6 finally come out, although we fear the worst. Because if that many people are playing nothing but Fortnite, could we eventually end up with nothing but Fortnite? Fortnite. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and why don't you join me on a trip down this hypothetical rabbit hole about the biggest threat to gaming yet? Maybe. Before we get into it, let's address the woolly warrior in the room first. This isn't a stonewall claim that Fortnite will kill gaming. In fact, this isn't really just about Fortnite specifically. Yes, the absolute unit that is Fortnite makes it a naturally easy target, but actually this is about the growing trend of video game publishers striving to make the never-ending game, to score more of that coveted player engagement, to be the only thing you ever play. You see it mainly with live service titles like Destiny or The Division, or free-to-play juggernauts like Fortnite or League of Legends, but in reality, any game that requires a heavy time investment is implicated here. You could stop playing, but then you'd fall behind. You wouldn't have that shiny new weapon or skin, and then you'd be a laughing stock, and you don't want that, do you? So just keep playing some more, there's a good consumer, and while you're here, you may as well buy some new outfits or another battle pass so you can look extra cool. All right, good lad. Remember everyone, there's no such thing as free. If you're not paying with your money, you're paying with your time and or your patience. Speaking of patience, or lack of it, Fortnite. The Titanic free-to-play battle royale only released in 2017 as an additional mode to the core tower defense game, but the game's invasion of every facet of pop culture was so swift, it feels like Fortnite has always existed, as constant as Oxygen or Mario attempting sports games. We're way beyond Fortnite being a mere video game. So why would a game that is so overwhelmingly popular be killing gaming, when it's arguably done more than any other game in recent memory to introduce gaming to new, young players? In a word, homogenization. Or, in a few more words, if everyone is playing Fortnite for long enough, will anyone play anything else? Or will everything become Fortnite light? Fortnite. We know it's quite a bold claim. We've had plenty of uber-popular games in the last 30 years that, yes, have produced plenty of copycats, but the industry has always balanced this with a healthy sprinkling of innovation, not least the battle royale genre that Fortnite itself helped popularise. But sticking with the dance-stealing jug-chugger, Fortnite has had an effect unlike any other game in recent memory, especially with younger players. The game doesn't consist solely of under-18s, of course. The latest stats we could find, according to Verto Analytics, claim 37% of players are 25 or over, so it doesn't fully match the only stupid annoying children play that dumb game stereotype. But, for any of you savvy maths nerds, you'll have worked out that number leaves 63% of players who are under 25. Technically, that only counts as 18 to 24, but that's likely because it's probably difficult to force children to fill out boring survey forms. However, an older survey from 2018 actually did manage to quiz the youth of today, at least the kids in America. This was exactly what Kim Wilde was singing about, by the way. And 45% said they'd played the game at least once. Incidentally, 11% said don't know, which makes you wonder how many Fortnite clones there were even one year after release, if you're not even sure whether you're playing Fortnite or 14 Day or Half Month or 
Minecraft Hunger Games. There are 500 games listed on Steam with the Battle Royale tag, which for a relatively young genre shows you just how readily other studios, big and small, will jump on a successful trend. Anyway, for a good portion of this younger generation, Fortnite is one of, if not the only game they'll invest a significant amount of time into. And you can't blame them. It's colourful, it's got a compelling gameplay loop, and it's a place to socialise with friends who are all playing it too. But if they're only playing Fortnite to the point of not even considering other games, then will they miss out on that nostalgic childhood experience so many older players have had, exploring different styles and genres, maybe borrowing a weird new game from that weird new kid at school and accidentally stumbling upon their new favourite thing ever? It obviously wouldn't happen overnight, if at all, but how many years of playing the same game would it take for young gaming enthusiasts to stop playing or for companies to just cater to this market alone in order to combat a lack of sales from other genres? Or to put it another way, when does a player stop being a fan of video games and start becoming just a fan of Fortnite? And when does the market begin to change as a result? Of course, suggesting Fortnite will live forever is ridiculous. Game engines update, things move on, new console generations and hardware updates bring about new eras, and most importantly, Fortnite's only four years old at this point. Barring some World of Warcraft level of devilish immortality, we doubt Fortnite will be the big boy or girl in the yard a decade from now. Then again, we might end up watching movies or seeing concerts exclusively in Tilted Towers or Pleasant Park, which frankly sounds like a dystopian hellscape we want no part of. But let's move away from just slagging off Fortnite before you accuse us of taking briefcases of unmarked banknotes from big mainstream media who are even more scared and confused about why all the young'uns are doing a floss all the time. How about those live service games, eh? Everyone loves those, right? Log in, do the same daily and weekly chores, earn incrementally better bonuses through loot or levels, rinse, repeat, forget to go to work, carry on doing your dailies and weeklies, partner leaves, more time for dailies, bailiff comes in to take the TV, you go with them so you can keep doing your dailies. It's the same elements taken from MMOs, distilled into a sterile formula to ensure maximum player count all day, every day, complete with season passes, drip-fed rewards, and relentless monetization. Yes, some of these games are genuinely well made and can be a lot of fun, especially with friends, but we're taking a deliberately cynical slant because that's both exactly how publishers view this new form of gaming and the only way I'm comfortable discussing things other people enjoy. The longer you spend on their game, the better. Having a set start and end point in your video game is for suckers, you old fool! The kids want a never-ending loop of stuff! And the more they play, the more they pay. Titles like Destiny, The Division, or to some extent even GTA Online represent the high watermark of the live service style, but when you look at weaker examples like Marvel's Avengers or Anthem, it's a worrying future if the trend continues. Ubisoft are even trying it with a damn single player game. Their plans for Assassin's Creed Infinity, a permanent content platform that will see regular updates with more historical settings and stories, could set an interesting precedent for the industry. You could trace this all the way back to the first generation of easily accessible, console-focused online gaming with the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Nintendo Wii. The conveyor belt of non-stop content started here, alongside widespread access to broadband internet, and let me tell you that Oblivion Horse Armor has a whole lot to answer for. We can't really be mad at the internet, of course, it's brought us closer together. It's seen more than ever during the multiple pandemics, it's how you're watching this whole video and the reason we even have a job. But some rather unscrupulous sorts will always find a way to squeeze as much money out of anything wonderful and useful and wholesome. Okay, the internet's not wholesome, but you know what we mean. So, how far away are we from having one amorphous blob of video game for everyone to log into and do whatever they want? Are we doomed to end up with a Ready Player One style oasis for all our entertainment needs? Well, Fortnite already have the awkward arbitrary pop culture references nailed down, existing solely for people to react with the I know that reference gif, so take that one off the list, I suppose. Realistically, if it did happen at all, it'd take decades. But then again, our tea leaf reading leaves a lot to be desired, and this is just a what-if scenario, so don't take our word as gospel. Let's take a step back and think. Maybe this trend of life service, free-to-play titles, isn't so bad. If a game is fun, why shouldn't we have more of it? And if everything eventually morphed into just one solitary game, well, as long as it had a vast buffet of different gameplay treats on offer, is that any different from just, you know, having a console or PC which offers different gameplay experiences? If we end up with a one-game singularity or just a few core games, there will inevitably be more and more things to do to keep players interested, and so that game, in a way, might become just another medium to deliver the actual game, just 
drilled down one layer. Multiple games within a game like Gmod or PlayStation Home or Mario Party, I suppose? That's certainly what Assassin's Creed Infinity is aiming for, and looking at it from that lens it seems much less threatening. It's just a different delivery service after all. And when we all have hyperspeed internet beamed into our brains, sponsored by Bill Gates and Pfizer, we'll all be streaming games anyway, so we'll need some sort of UI interface, right? And from there, you'll have all the variety you could ask for. As for free-to-play titles, who doesn't love a freebie? When balanced correctly, they're fantastic for those who can't afford the ever-expanding price of new AAA games. And really, this doesn't come down to Fortnite or Destiny or any modern game at all. This debate of originality versus bandwagon hopping has raged on for decades, ever since gaming has become a mainstream form of entertainment, and it's not devolved into one giant game of Tetris with guns just yet. The AAA studios that take fewer risks ripping off whatever's popular at the time have always been balanced by the other guys, the smaller studios or the indies who strive for creativity, trying new things to get ahead of the game. And while we pointed the finger at online connectivity earlier with strong old man yells at cloud gaming energy, let's be real. We've never had more variety of choice, with thousands upon thousands of unique indie titles, double-A studios and hell, even the occasional wildcard from a big multinational company too. So can we sit here and unironically state that Fortnite is killing gaming? We'd love to have that authority, but no. The wider trends of live services of companies trying to make that one game that nobody will ever stop playing is still worrying. But then, isn't that the lofty, unattainable goal of every studio? To make the ultimate game? That still hasn't stopped thousands of creators from following their dream and creating something new, something weird and something wonderful. You can have your Call of Duty and your Fortnite, but you can also have Katamari Damacy. Destiny can coexist with Dear Esther. Kids growing up with only one game, whether that be Fortnite or something else, could well change the landscape eventually, to the point where companies end up either producing content exclusively for that one mega game, or trying hard to make something exactly like it. But that's the extreme end of the thought experiment. Humans like change, they like new, shiny experiences, no amount of cool new skins or radical battle passes can change that. Just keep an eye on Fortnite, just in case. I don't trust it, and it's definitely planning something.